Hello class, uh, I wanted to give you a quick little lecture here on um, chapter 4, section 6, where we're <coughs> excuse me, doing application problems with some of our exponential functions. I want to refer you first to example 3 on page 453 and uh, look at that problem a little bit. So that problem uh, says this, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, the world population re reached 6 billion people in 1999 and was growing exponentially. <coughs> By the end of 2010, the population had grown to 6.947 billion. The projected world population in billions of people two, two years after 2010 is given by, and we have this function here. Uh, given to us f of t equals 6.947 e to the point zero zero seven four five t part a based on this model what would the world population be in 2020 okay so here we're given a formula our formula in this case is a function and I've tried to encourage you this semester that whenever you're given a formula to label the variables. Okay, so that means we have a reading problem. What is this function giving us? It's giving us the world population in billions. So this f of t right here is the population in billions of people. And t is the number of years after 2010. So in 2011, t would be 1. In 2012, t would be 2, so on and so forth. Okay, so part A says, based on this model, what would the world population be in 2020? So it's asking for the population, and it's giving me a time, and in 2020, t would be 10. So for that part of the problem, part A, all we're going to do is put 10 in for t. So we'd be looking at f of 10, which would equal 6.947 e to the point 0, 0, 0.0745 times 10. And according to your textbook, that turns out to be approximately 7.484 if you crunch the numbers on your calculator. So in 2020, using this model, we would expect the population of the world to be nearly 7.5 billion people. Okay, now in part B, it says in what year would we expect the population to be 9 billion? So now we're not given a T, we're given the population, so we're given F of T. So we're going to put the 9 in for F of T, and then we'll have an exponential equation to solve. So if we do that, 9 in for F of T would give me 9 equal to 6.947 e to the point zero zero seven four five times t which as I said is an exponential equation because my exponent is a variable and we know from previous sections that the first thing that we want to do then is isolate the exponential part so we're going to divide both sides by 6.947. If you do that, you'll end up with 1.296 equal to e to the point zero zero seven four five t. And then we know to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 1.296 
will equal the natural log of e to the 0 0.00745t, but I'm going to take that power and move it out in front. So that would be 0 0.00745t times the natural log of e, which we know is 1. So we can ignore it. And now to get the t by itself, all we need to do is divide both sides by 0 0.00745. And get those to cancel. And if you crunch the numbers here on your calculator, that should turn out to be right at 34.8. So the population would cross 9 billion people 34.8 years after 2010. So... 34 in the 34th year after 2010 we would be in the year 2044 so sometimes toward the end of 2044 is what the model would say as far as when to pass 9 billion now this problem is an example of what's known as exponential growth And it hints of a um, genre of problems that are called exponential growth and decay problems. Because some things don't grow exponentially, some things decay exponentially. Now to, say, to say that they grow exponentially or decay exponentially is equivalent to saying that they grow or decay continuously. Let me illustrate what I mean. Let's say you had a table sitting here. Table. And the top of that table had, uh, for Micah, like so many tables do, like the tables at school. What if I ask you what that formica would look like in 10,000 years. You know, it'd probably be uh, not much there but left. It would have decayed. Things are constantly decaying. Might look like a pile of dust by then. Who knows? And if you think about the way that it decayed, it's continuously decaying. In other words, it didn't go like a year and then a chunk fall off. And then another year, then another little chunk falls off. No, that's not the way it decays. It decays continuously. It's constantly decaying. And in that way, the way in which it's decaying is like when we talked about continuously compounded interest, which had a model that looked like this. The formula for continuously compounded interest was A is equal to PE to the RT. Well, the model for exponential growth and decay looks just like that. In fact, this equation is just a specific example of the model for exponential growth and decay, which looks like this. Y equals Y naught E to the KT. This Y is the end amount of your substance, just like the A was the end amount of our money. Okay, so again, the formica, if you wanted to know how much would be left after 10,000 years, that would be that Y. Now, this P over here was the amount we initially, initially invested so y sub 0 over here is the beginning amount. It's the amount initially. <clears throat> this k is a constant. 
Now it's equivalent to R over here. The R determined how fast your money was growing. But this K uh, would do the same. It would determine how fast something is growing. Or if the K was negative, it would be determining how fast uh, your substance would be decaying. So if K is positive, you're growing. If it's negative, you're decaying. And T is your time. So it's the same notion. So if you get a problem that says something is growing or decaying exponentially, what it means for you is it fits this model. You can always use a model like this on that kind of problem. Okay, that brings us to example four where we're going to have that very thing. Suppose Suppose 600 grams of a radioactive substance are present initially, and three years later only 300 grams remain. A. Determine the exponential equation that models this decay. B. How much of the substance will be present after six years? Okay, well, a radioactive substance is going to decay continuously. Or, notice it says here, determine the exponential equation. That's why we know that it fits the model y equals y naught e to the kt. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in to this formula uh, everything that we know. So let's look at the problem again. Suppose 600 grams of a radioactive substance are present initially. Well, the why not is your uh, initial amount. So that's going to be 600. We know that. And three years later, three would be my T, years later, only 300 grams remain. The end amount, this Y, is going to be 300. Okay, so from that sentence we have this, 300 is equal to 600 e to the 3 times k. Okay, now look at part b. We're going to come back to this in a moment. This equation here we'll come back to. But look at part b. It says, how much of the substance will be present after 6 years? Well, after six years, my y will be different, okay? So I'll have y, in fact, that's what I'm looking for, is how much will be left. We equal my, y not will still be 600, because I still started with 600. e to the now t is 6, and I still don't have k. So to do part b, I need this k right here. But if I look at um, this equation over here, I can use it to get k. Okay, so let's do that. That's another exponential equation. We have to get the exponential part by itself first. So I need to divide by 600 on both sides. 300 divided by 600 is 0.5 is equal to e to the 3k. Take the natural log of both sides. I'll have the natural log of 0.5 equal to the 3k is going to come out in front times the natural log of e, which is 1. And then if I divide both sides by 3, we'll see what k is, which means we've got a calculator problem. It should turn out to be negative because we're decaying. Let's see if it does. I got K to be negative 0.231. Okay, so part A of the problem asks me, what's the exponential equation that models this decay? Now that we've got our K, we've got that model. It is Y is equal to 600 E to the negative 0.231 
times t, since I know k, which is consistent with what we said over here a moment ago, okay, except now we know that our t is this 6, and now we know k. So, to do the second part of the problem, y will equal 600 e to the 6 times negative 0.231, which according to your book turns out to be approximately 150. So after six years, we would have about 150 grams of the substance. So the two answers to the problem are actually, there's part A, and here's part B. Okay, that should put you in pretty good position to work on page 457, problems 11, 14, 20, and 22.